Hey everybody, Alexios here. Okay, so I'm gonna read to you another story from my Mindless Jumbles collection. This one's called A Terrible Life. Now, as you probably will notice, I am a little bit sick. Actually, I'm a lot a bit sick. So my voice is different than what you're used to. It's richer, more compact. It's deeper, more vibrant, has a different energy, a kind of an enigma to it that it didn't have before. So get ready to be surprised at this new, amazing, sick reading voice. Here we go. This story is called A Terrible Life. I don't know if I said that. Okay. I wrote this a long time ago. Blech. Vindicating myself would be just great. Really, it would certainly make my day any day. I'm in no mood to explain myself to you, so I'll explain myself to my worst enemy. Really, vindicating myself would make my day, I try to explain to him. My worst enemy shouts, What does that even mean? As he swings a punch at my my face and I duck into it. We stand there for a second, his fist in my face, as I stare at his knuckles. Ow, I say, then fly against the wall and black out. I wake up to find a fist in my face again, and black out again. I reawaken to find him standing over me, a gun pointed to my head. You are pointing a gun to my head, I point out. You bet I am, he screams. But why, though? Isn't it enough that I can't even wake up without getting knocked out? Never! What's your problem, anyway? My problem is I can't find your wallet, but I know it's on you. No, it's not. It's in my car, that red one over there. Oh, thank you. He punches me out of reality again. I wake up to find that my car is missing, as well as my wallet. I have no money on me, and I'm in the middle of the slums of the biggest and most confusing and unpredictable, and the list goes on and on, city in the world. Looks like I'm having to... I'm, <laughs> looks like I'm going to have to steal some money from someplace. As I walk down a street, trying to think of a plan, some random person walks past me, handing me a million-dollar note on the way. I don't notice the fortune I'm waving around as I think, until after I conceive a brilliant money theft plan. As soon as I see the single note, I immediately try to buy a hot dog. But the hot dog vendor doesn't have change for a million dollar note. So despite my fortune, I go hungry. I go to a few other food stores, but all of them don't have the change I need. At one point, when I'm practically starving, I give up on my fortune and hand it to the first person I pass. The person doesn't even notice it, being very absorbed in his thoughts. I wander on. Hey, you, says a voice. I finally look up. I have wandered into a poor-looking neighborhood, and there's a big guy standing over me, looking rather mean. What about you? I respond. The guy didn't quite hear me. What? I said, what about you? What do you mean? He asks me. I'd also like to know that, too, I respond. Know what, too? What do you mean? I say, quoting him. What do you mean, what do you mean? He asks in confusion. I get a little confused. Uh, what do you mean? Yes, the big guy exclaims in relieved agitation. Yes, what? Yes, that was the question. What was the question? What do you mean, what do you mean? He says it slowly to make sure I can just say it slowly. What do you mean, what do you mean? He said, <laughs> okay. He says it slowly to make sure I get it. That was the question? Yes. Oh. I knit my eyebrows, nearly tight enough to split the skin on my forehead. So you're going to give me an answer, or am I going to clobber you? The mean man raises his fist threateningly. Okay, I'll answer you. I ponder for an aggravating moment. As a matter of fact, I just did. A few times, I laugh. I was being horribly cheeky, and I knew it. When, says the guy, starting to get very aggravated. When? Every time you ask me a question, I answer it. That's not what I mean. Oh, isn't it? No, I want you to give me an answer to the question, what do you mean, what do you mean? Spittle flies from his cavernous mouth. I scratch my head. Ouch, my brain hurts. Can we do this later? No. All right, fine. So, I think what happened was, you said, hey you. And I said, what about you? Because you said, hey you. Am I clear? The guy doesn't look very enlightened. We'll see. Keep going. All right. Uh, so I said, what about you? And then you said, what? And I repeated myself, 
And you said, what do you mean? And then I said, I'd also like to know that too, because I wanted to know what you meant. Meant by what? Uh, what do you mean? I mean, you wanted to know what I meant by what? Exactly that. Uh, what do you mean? I just told you what I meant. I know. I was just telling you what you said that I wanted to know what you meant about. I think. The guy winces, straining hard and breathing heavily as smoke starts to come out of his ears. I just don't understand. I clutch my head in agony. My brain feels like it's melting. Are you sure we can't stop this? Never! Suddenly I notice that there is a crowd around us, watching intently. Okay, I try again. So, I wanted to know what you meant by, what do you mean? I look at the guy with an embarrassed grin. I don't know what an embarrassed grin is. Why? The man looks as if every vein in his body is about to pop out of his skin. I can't remember. Oh, the guy keels over and dies. And the newcomer is the winner, cries a voice from a megaphone. The crowd cheered. I was handed a medal. Excuse me, it's present tense. I had handed a medal, given a pat on the back, and then the crowd disperses in a matter of seconds, and I am left alone once more. I wander aimlessly through the city, trying to find something of interest. I see a store with the title Lunatic Shop, and I enter it, curious to know what kind of lunatics there are for sale. I am very discouraged to find out that the store owner is a raving lunatic, and that the items he sells are quite sane. I leave as fast as I can. After some time, I end up wondering where I am, and so ask some passerby if he could tell me. I don't know where we are. That's why this part of town is called the Lost Zone, explains the passerby. Is there a way to get out of the Lost Zone? I ask. Not unless you know where you are, or you stumble out of here accidentally. Do you know someone who knows where he is so he can show me the way out? Yeah, I know where he is. Only problem is that I don't know where I am, so I don't know how to get to him. I thank the person and keep walking. As I walk, I suddenly realize that I have... I must have stumbled out of the lost zone because I suddenly know where I am. I'm dead center in a minefield. There are two people next to me, keeping very still and looking very scared. I know how to get out of here, says one of them. How? asks the other. Follow me and walk exactly where I walk, the first person replies. We follow him, me in the very back, the other person in the middle. We hadn't gone more than two steps before the person we're following mutters, Shucks! I did it again! And blows up. Now what? says the person in front of me. I suppose we keep walking, I say. Are you nuts? We'll end up like him! <coughs> the man points to a rag lying pitifully in front of us. I'd rather end up like him than not end up at all. I quote an unpopular saying of mine. Your psychology is stupid. And then I'm saying, you're stupid. Haven't you noticed that you're standing in a minefield? I am, cries the person and jumps back in horror and blows up. What did I tell you? I say to his ashes. Okay, you were right. The ashes reply. I get so scared I jump forward 30 meters and land on the other side of the minefield. Don't do that to me again, I reprimand the ashes. Then I turn around and trudge on. After some time, I come upon an old granny walking along the road towards me. Halt! She cries. I instantly stop, too late realizing I'm in the middle of an intersection and get hit by a truck. Darn old grannies, I think, as I am driven away, sprawled on the windshield like a prostrate fly. Hey, get off my windshield, shouts the driver. Before I have a chance to do anything, the driver turns on his windshield wipers and swipes me off. I am flung into a ditch and lie there, wondering how to strangle butterflies, when some homeless guy says, Hey, get out of my ditch. Oh, bug off, I tell him. I am very unhappy when he plants his fist in my face, and I black out. I wake up and sit up suddenly, too suddenly, because I accidentally hit my head against the telephone pole and black out again. I wake up to find a guy standing over me, viciously waving something in front of my face. You gotta take my car keys, he cries. What? I mumble. My car keys and my car. You gotta take them. How come? The man looks mortified. Because I accidentally scratched the paint job and I just bought it today. The man starts to sob. <laughs> so, I manage. So? What do you mean, so? The man explodes. I hate my car. You gotta take it from me. He shakes the keys violently. Okay, fine. If you insist, I relent. 
feigning to do it, be doing it as a favor. The man beams. I can't tell you how grateful I am. Don't bother. I can't tell you how grateful you are either. I get into the car and start the engine. Bye, says the man, looking deeply happy. However, before I can get anywhere, I realize I'm in the lost zone again, feeling very lost. I am very surprised when the police catch me, and I am put in jail without a trial for the rest of my life on account of the murder of a man in some poor neighborhood and the theft of a stolen, illegally made car, which is actually a giant top-secret boulder in disguise. I hate my life. The end. That's the story. Let me know what you think. Comment, share, and subscribe and stuff. Did you like my sick voice? Did I be sick every time I read a story? You let me know. <laughs> okay.